those years, living the life of someone I didn't even know. Night of Cups is the second film of what I guess can be called Terrence Malick's experimental trilogy, which also includes To the Wonder and Song to Song. All three of these films were shot mostly without a script to experiment with improvisation, metaphorical images and other non-traditional ways of filmmaking. Sometimes um, uh, they just give me a GoPro and say I'll go drive around LA for a little bit with one of the other actors or by myself and just kind of film things and do a scene if we feel like doing a scene or not or go in the ocean for a little bit and swim. Although the result may seem off-putting and pretentious to many, Malik did create a unique process and vision which I believe deserves to be explored in more detail. Like the Tree of Life, Malik is again concerned with complicated existential themes and explores these in Knight of Cups by modeling its story after the Hymn of the Pearl from the Acts of Thomas. The Hymn of the Pearl tells the tale of a prince who was sent west into Egypt to find a pearl. But when he arrived, the people poured him a cup and the prince fell into a deep sleep, forgetting he was the son of the king, forgetting about the pearl. Malik uses this story as a metaphor for losing oneself, one's sense of meaning, of purpose. Existential philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote in a similar way about the danger of falling into this deep sleep. The greatest hazard of all, losing oneself, can occur very quietly in the world, as if it were nothing at all. No other loss can occur so quietly. Any other loss, an arm, a leg, five dollars, a wife, etc., is sure to be noticed. So let's take a closer look at how Malik explores this loss of self and the subsequent quest for meaning that follows it. In Night of Cups we follow Rick, a screenwriter trying to find meaning in his life which, especially in the hedonistic world of Hollywood, seems like a hopeless pursuit. Kierkegaard wrote extensively about this fundamental discomfort every human being experiences when attempting to relate to the outside world in search of meaning, a despair that according to him arises from the self. The self is seen by Kierkegaard not as a noun but as a verb, as that which relates to the relation between the finite and the infinite, two opposites that are present in all of us. The finite relates to the necessary, the consequences of our limited being in a concrete reality. The infinite, on the other hand, relates to the possible, our ability to create new thoughts and ideas, to come up with endless potential. Existential despair arises when one relates to this relation in an unbalanced way, which happened to Rick when he entered into the Hollywood life and found the world of the infinite. You see the palm trees? They tell you anything's possible. You can be anything. Do anything. He turned into what Kierkegaard would call the asthet. A man who has become hypersensitive to his potential, settling for nothing and only chasing base pleasures and the momentarily interesting. They are like flavors. Sometimes you want raspberry, then after a while you get tired of it, you want some strawberry. Like any other addiction, overstimulation like this leads to boredom and ultimately meaninglessness. For it is not true meaning he is chasing, just the idea of it, as one character notes. You don't want love. You want a love experience. We also see this reflected in the title of the film, which refers to a tarot card of the same name. In divination practices, the Knight of Cups card in reverse, like the film poster hints at, symbolizes a similar type of personality that is highly sensual and desperate to feel good. Someone who has lost his sense of meaning to end up stuck between reality and fantasy. He is, however, not completely lost. As the hymn of the Pearl story continues, the prince received letters from his father, the King of the East, to help him remember who he was. Rick also receives these messages throughout the film from characters he encounters and other inciting events such as the almost literal wake-up call from an earthquake in the beginning of the film that motivate him on his quest for meaning, represented here as the light on top of the mountain. As a child. 
Knight of Cups is structured by tarot cards that refer to the different chapters of the film, each one hinting at what is going to happen, such as Rick being robbed in a chapter named after the tower card which predicts a sudden upset. What I think is most important here is that the tarot card chapters represent Rick's deeper longing for meaning, any kind of meaning, to give some sense of structure to his fragmented life and avoid what he sees as damnation. I suppose that's what damnation is, the pieces of your life never to come together. This is again reflected by the audience's search for meaning in Malik's fragmented narrative structure, which was the inevitable consequence of Malik's unscripted approach in which even he didn't know exactly what he was filming until he got to the editing phase. I personally see it as a beautiful interconnectedness of the narrative and the filmmaking process, one that comes much closer to touching on real life that, as Kierkegaard puts it, is lived forwards but can only be understood backwards. Rick's longing for meaning is probably most evident in his relations with women, in which he sees that which he himself has lost. When we see a beautiful woman, the soul remembers the beauty it used to know in heaven. As a consequence, he seems to place his existential burden on them, making them his source for existential closure to the point of fetishizing them, which of course dooms his relations to failure as their finite reality or or more simply put, the fact that these women are just human beings can never live up to what Rick wants them to be. And so his quest goes on, but over the course of the film it seems as if Rick is making little progress. Instead of a more linear progression towards some form of climax, Malik shows a seemingly endless cycle of falling in and out of love, falling asleep and waking back up even though some encounters seem to provide a bit more hope than others based on the metaphorical desert landscapes Malik frequently shows us, Rick is still stuck in the desert, only seeing reflections of the greater light that continues to elude him. How do I begin? Near the end of the film, Rick encounters a priest who points out that Rick's suffering is exactly what connects him to God or the infinite. To suffer binds you to something higher than yourself, higher than your own will. It takes you from the world to find what lies beyond it. Here again we see the influence of Kierkegaard and his concept of the self, not as a stable entity, but as an act. As an act, one focuses on relating oneself to the relation between the finite and the infinite, instead of always chasing the infinite as something to be grasped or contained. This has also been made popular by New Age Power of Now type philosophies that focus on the role of one's attitude towards the outside world instead of one's attachments to it. For Kierkegaard, reconciling Reconciling this balance between the finite and the infinite is the only way out of despair. This, according to him, is done through faith, but not in the traditional sense that requires you to be part of an organized religion or hold on to an objective worldview that you know is not true. Instead, he speaks of taking a leap of faith, connecting to the infinite by relating oneself absolutely to a transcendent source transforming love for other people into a love for the eternal being that shines through them and therefore not trying to achieve the infinite in finite things. The light in the eyes of others. This is not an act based on logic or reason, which is exactly why it's called a leap of faith. It emphasizes the importance of a subjective worldview rather than an objective one, and inversely, an objective view towards oneself rather than a subjective one. By making this leap, the Knight of Cups becomes the Knight of Faith, a person who according to Kierkegaard is someone who outwardly is indistinguishable from the crowd, but inwardly is constantly making this movement of infinity, this relating oneself to a higher source of the infinite. The Knight of Faith is however a mostly hypothetical being, for in reality to be free from despair means that this movement of faith must be made continually on the strength of the absurd, a repetition that is almost impossible to uphold continuously. 
This becomes clear at the end of the film when Rick is seemingly happy and freed from despair, scaling the mountains towards the light, when suddenly Killa's exodus starts playing again. The song that earlier introduced the hymn of the pearl and Rick's falling asleep. We see clouds move in to obscure the light, pushing it back to the horizon, concluding with the image of yet another journey towards the elusive sunset, accompanied by the single word, begin.